You are my life, my love. My soul's in your body. You are my heart, my love. You've taken it from me. Don't give it away, my love. You leave me with nothing. You are my life. You are my life. Oh, oh, oh. Well, somebody heard it, but they didn't know why. Heartbeats and echoes coming out of the sky. We may not ever really understand why, but we'd follow it to the end, to the end. Cause you are my life, my love, my soul's in your body. You are my heart, my love, you've taken it from me, don't give it away, my love. You leave me with nothing, you are my life, you are my life. Oh, oh. So let's see. Should we uh, should we take note of who's here and who's not? See so, see who got suicided. <laughs> who who toggled the S vest? You guys know what an S vest is? You guys heard of that? That's suicide vest. You see someone with an S vest? <laughs> you're effed. <laughs> if you're close enough to see the vest, they got a dead man switch. You're done. If they're any good at building a suicide vest. <laughs> See the trick? Put the ball bearings on the outside. If you put it on the inside, it's just going to mangle you up. You want the ball bearings on the outside. You want a radius. <laughs> you know what also works? Silverware. Weird, con weird conversation. Okay. So, yeah. Crazy market. Um, you guys probably get why I say over and over and over don't use leverage you don't need to look how crazy the crypto space is that it can sell off by 40 50 60 percent in a week bounce by 30 percent the next day so if you know you're going to expose yourself to these kind of markets where you can where anybody can get rich overnight you guys hear cardano in the last 12 months has created 6400 new millionaires Yep. And that's not like the end. It's not like the end of it. It's like there's no more. All the million, all the money's been taken, y'all. There's no more money. There's a lot more money. Why? Because the whole legacy financial system is going to unwind partially, right? It's going to partially unwind, and digital assets are going to come in and they're going to supplant frictions in the legacy financial system. There is a dump truck full of money right there about. Somewhere between 250 trillion and two, two and a half quadrillion. Um, do you guys know what a quadrillion is? Most people, they don't. They go quadrillion. That's a that's a made up number. So here's a way to a cool way to think about it. A million seconds ago, it was like a couple of weeks ago. A million seconds ago, Bitcoin was at 58k. Hey, a million seconds ago. Not that long. A billion seconds ago, most of you were, you know, getting out of high school. Okay. A trillion seconds ago, uh, woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers were walking the earth. A quadrillion seconds ago, there was no earth. It hadn't formed yet. Well, it had partially formed but it would still be another 32 million years before the first human. Well, not even really human, uh, homo, homo erectus, right? Cause we had the big, big dry, the big, uh, uh, system of aridity that went through, uh, the Northern part of Africa and it forced us down out of the trees. Anyway, I keep hoping there's more. This is one of those cups where it's like so delicious and sweet and yummy. You just hope there's more. Where is the rest of it? It's all gone. I drank it literally on the way back from, I don't even have any time to enjoy it. Brandon and I were kind of chopping it up. But yeah, if you don't take leverage, none of this stuff bothers you. If you take leverage, all of this stuff bothers you. And a lot of people got nuked. You got nuked if you had leverage. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know how long we have to yell about this. You don't need it in this space. There's so much currency units to be made. You don't need leverage.
So don't take leverage. Don't borrow against risky assets to buy more risky assets. If you want to borrow against your risky assets, hold it in stable coin, USDC, not USDT, USDC. They actually have auditing. It's crazy. All right. Let me say hello to all the peeps. Um, did a cool show, get a kind of a little partial show this morning on Money Morning Live. So we're figuring out the schedule right now. It looks like I'm going to do two Monday shows over there and a Friday show. And that'll be like the normal thing. So the this show should be um, consistently Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then maybe a weekend show. We don't know yet. We're thinking about it. But, uh, you know, idea what idea. Okay, SJO Theta TV, good to see you. CC Brown, um, good to see you. Baykeeper, Biotech Breakout, get involved. Belinda Cook, um, there it is. Uh, the real J. Cole, video tuber, Bitcornification, Joe Pirate. SJO, yeah, SJO, we got you. Um, bah, 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 bah. Who do we, uh, uh, Jasnock, uh, Antonio, what's going on? Solid Gold, McNabb. Crypto Gamer 420. And did I say Gordon Bennett? Gordon Bennett's in the house. Okay, cool. I think that's the whole team. Crypto Fanatico. What's going on? Okay, over here we got Dubai Money, Joe Fernandez, Kionda. Um, oh, I gotta thank my buddy Diego. Um, uh, we went and had uh, dinner last night, talked crypto. It was a lot of fun. I had fajitas. Fajitas. I don't even speak Spanish, but you know what? When I have fajitas, I don't pronounce the J. I'm not a chump. I'm not a rookie. It's not fajitas. Can I get some fajitas? No, moron. You intolerant piece of shit. Get out of my restaurant. Salgate. Pinche puto. All right. Joe Fernandez, what's going on? Uh, darting uphill. Ryan. Todd B. Emmanuel. What's going on, Emmanuel? We've been chatting a little bit. Uh, Belinda on the other side. Brady, what's going on? Scott Hill. Yeah. Yep. Nice bounce today. Um, was it worth leaving the trees? <laughs> well, we'd never choice, did we? That's actually why our visual acuity and why our phalanges work the way they work. It's for it was for uh, dexterity for moving through um, environments where we were we had to climb and we had to. Um, it, this this was not developed on the ground. This was developed in trees. That kind of acuity, and also there's some other really cool things. It's very fortuitous that we got where we are right now. There have been a lot of very fortunate accidents. Andre Coins, what's going on? Uh, okay, so we got uh, Anonymous, Sylvia, Todd B, S2K, Hobo, Adam, Jim. Jim. I feel like we're in a scene from Star Trek. Jim. Um, Jeffrey. Uh, saw some, uh, some sad stories on Twitter. Oof. It was bad. You know, I don't want to tell the whole story. It's, it's another story for another time, but um, – you guys know a good friend of mine who I work with. Um, he he knows a guy that a guy knows a guy that blew up. I think forty million dollars worth of uh, a forty million dollar account. Poof, had a bad week, over leveraged, gone, like gone. So it it comes and goes and. You just have to be very careful that you're not using leverage when you don't need it. Um, and we'll get into more of that. Cass, good to see you. 29 LH06, good to see you. Um, $8 billion. No, no, no. No, no. $8 billion in liquidations just on one exchange. And remember, $8 billion is not that big of a deal. We've been doing that about every other weekend. You guys know that, right? Just through, just through Bitfinex, Bybit, and Binance. There's about eight to ten, eight to ten billion every single weekend when there's one of these liquidity unwinds. This was a little different because this was a shakeout, not just of people with profligate leverage. This was a shakeout of people that don't know what the fuck they're doing in the crypto market. And this was important, and this was good, and this was healthy. And if you got wrecked, and you made a trade because of it that wasn't balancing or buying, you panicked. And so, and everybody panicked a little bit, but the real number is not 8 billion. 500 billion disappeared from the crypto market. What does that mean? Well, market caps came down and things like that. Doesn't mean the money's not gone. The whole market cap thing's a little bit nebulous anyway. Um, but 
Um, yeah, anywhere between 8, 10, 11 billion. That's a normal liquidation. You think about these platforms that have 125x leverage. Man, do you trust anyone on earth other than AI? Anyone to manage 125x leverage? That's stupid. It's stupid. It's irrational. It's profligate. It's not wise. And so I get it. When some of these guys come out and they talk about, oh, Bitcoin's poison, all this kind of stuff. Okay, I get it. You're on the shelf. But they're not completely wrong about the kind of behavior that surrounds it. You know, I used to, when I was first in the crypto space, well, back in the day, back in 2014 and 2015, when Leroy and I was in the crypto space, <laughs> but when we first got in and we even would discuss crypto uh, digital assets around anybody, they would look at us like they were, like we were just, well, uber nerds, but it wasn't the kind of contempt you get now. And all the way up until last year, we were just looked at as nerds, rich nerds, nerds with cool shit, but nerds, nerds are cool. Nerds make money. Nerds make economies move forward. Nerds are good with technology. It's cool. It's okay to be a nerd. But what changed is when the YOLO buck came in the market, hashtag COVID, hashtag free money, hashtag couch money, hashtag don't pay your fucking car bills, hashtag don't pay for your apartment, hashtag don't pay for your rent, hashtag, hashtag the mayors are saying don't pay rent, hashtag well, – you just keep going down. The, the YOLO, GameStop, Hertz, whatever you want to call it. When, when the idiot dollar came into the market and started throwing money at shit, no clue what they're owning. And some of you here may have been in the front end of that. Some of you may have come to the crypto space through that. And, and, but obviously, if you're still here, you're learning and you're, you're doing what they're not doing. You're willing to do the research. Well, you know, the reality is that those are not the most – it's not that they're not intelligent people, but they're not intelligent investors. If you don't know what you own, how on earth can you manage those assets? How on earth can you manage leverage? When the way you trade is what's going up, what's going down, I'm in, I'm out, sideways. But just go, go to Vegas. Take all of your stuff. Go to Vegas. Give it a go. Save about eight bucks so you can buy some methamphetamines when you get out. And you can sit on that little sky bridge thing near Aria and that other, that like kind of sketch casino anyway. And you can just sit on that little bridge, you can put a little cardboard thing out. I used to be crypto rich. <laughs> um, I'm going to get to your questions. Let's, we're going to get back in a second, but uh, just the greater story is I hope everybody learned from this. I hope everybody learned from this. There was a lot of pain, but it was well-deserved pain. So, yeah, don't – they offered you a 1000 to play with futures. Are they just going to give you a 1000 bucks, or are they going to give you a 1000 if you put in 30000 or some kind of sketch thing like that? Um, don't take leverage, man. You don't need leverage. Uh, let's see. Uh, where does the money go when you get liquidated? The person betting – yes, the person betting on the other side, and in, and in certain circumstances, the exchange. There is a problem, and it's very hard to figure out. Some exchanges, the prices go a little bit lower than maybe they do anywhere else. I'll give you an example. Let's say you were on Deribit. We know how low the price got on every exchange, and yet the most liquid exchange, Deribit, it was $4,000 lower than anywhere else in the whole world for one second. In that one second, they liquidated, just on Deribit, over a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. You know where that money went? That money went to Deribit because they liquidated options positions as well. Mine that were all winning, every one of them, they're all in the money. They liquidated all of them. They just basically took all my money away. It happens. Sometimes you can be right and it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes you can do, you can take all the precautions and it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can do everything you think is correct and it doesn't matter. But what you can't do is uh, dwell on it. 
you learn from it. And sometimes what you learn is that being right isn't the same thing as being correct, right? You might be right about something, but go back to the old saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich, right? And, and, that, and that digs deeper into the game theory, the realities, uh, the human tragedy. So, yeah, I, I got – <laughs> So I lost some money on Darabit because they took all my options away, all my options positions. It was really sketchy. I'm fighting it, you know, through the little process where you fight it. What's going to come of it? Nothing. I'm not going to go and hire lawyers and all that to go after them for, you know, whatever. But they, it was pretty scammy the way it went down because normally they would say, okay, deposit some more collateral, which of course I would. For, for those of you who don't know, I sold the 35K options. Oh, what's Bitcoin at right now? Let me look. Let's see if those 35Ks are coming in. Oh, yes, yeah, 41,800. Hmm. That was just yesterday. Well, that's strange. So normally what they do is they say, hey, you have so many hours to deposit collateral. Nope. No collateral warning. Just gone. All of it gone. So I'm going to fight them. But what can you do? You don't want to. There's a point where you just say, okay, learn and move on. Exchanges can pull shenanigans. And so when you see these regulators say, hey, you know, maybe the crypto market's a little bit, you know, not volatile, but maybe not trustworthy enough for ETFs, maybe there's something to that. Do you think it's weird that, that Coinbase has never made it through any kind of big unwind without shutting down? Ever? Not one? Ever? It's a publicly traded company like – Kraken didn't shut down. KuCoin didn't shut down. Huobi didn't shut down. OKEX didn't shut down. Bitru didn't shut down. Matter of fact, I can go through the whole list. I think there was two exchanges. It was Binance. No surprise. <laughs> and it was uh, Coinbase. So, you know, just keep it in mind. Um, you can be right. Or you can be rich. Sometimes it's the same thing. Most times it isn't. Okay, let's get on to the show. So uh, Pete Kelly, Anonymous, Hoop and Tony Garth. Do I have everyone? Bernard, have I acknowledged all my peeps? This is a long-winded teaser. This is the teaser part. Yeah, I got in actually. Okay, when you guys are having trouble getting in um, to Coinbase, here's the trick. A, don't go into regular Coinbase. Use Coinbase Pro. B, use different browsers. So I'll try it. I'll try it on Brave. I'll try and I'll just try two or three different browsers and go refresh, 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 refresh. And then one will get in. You know which one it is? It's always Brave. Brave is always the one that finally gets in. Dan, what up? Good to see you. Uh, Bill, good to see you. Tube Dad Pipeline, good to see you. Okay, we will be back after these non commercial messages and we will actually try to get something done today. Knowledge. Today's going to be kind of a fun one. Just to just to remind, uh, Singularity Dow, Dow airdrop is today for those of you that owned. Uh, you know what? We'll get to it. We're talking Paul Krugman. We're talking Bitcoin's here to stay and maybe some other stuff. But I digress. Oh, I don't want that one. I want, I want that one. Okay. Yeah, that was a Quentin Tarantino intro, wasn't it? It just kept going. We're like three quarters of the way through the movie. Yeah, Coinbase, Coinbase is low. I think it touched, it went below 200 for a spit. Um, I know a lot of people that are trying to trade Coinbase. God. Why are you trading a thing that's pivoting off of a thing, off of a thing, off of a thing, off of a thing? Don't trade, period. But if you're going to trade, trade the pure asset. Don't trade the thing that trades off of the thing that's pivoted off of the thing that's pegged to the thing. You want to know how Coinbase is going to do? How's Bitcoin going to do? 
You want leverage. You want to be, well, whatever. Anyway, uh, Wind Flare, supposed to be the end of Q2. We are uh, end of June, January, February, March, April, May, June, about end of June. Um, oh, here's my flare trick for anybody that wants uh, a tactic. Sell half, keep half. If you sit on it and it goes to zero, you're going to be pretty pissed off. And if you dump it all and it goes to eight bucks, you'll be pretty pissed off. My guess is because the, the XRP community is incredibly vigilant and compliant. They're a bunch of kind of very motivated individuals. <laughs> it, it's, it's like a religion. So don't sell all of it. Keep some of it. But I would sell part of it. Take some money. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Legally speaking, uh, you can be telling the truth by saying we don't have a liquidity issue, even though you know, <laughs> even though you're scared of potentially having one. It's how Vlad got away with the GME stuff. Yeah. That guy, let me tell you, Vlad is a snake. You guys know that, right? That dude gamed everybody. <laughs> he gamed everybody. Oh, oh, one to nothing. Hey, first one through the door, right? Okay. Um, let's look on, uh, let's just see what's going on on Vortex. Interesting. Uh, Matt, it's the first time it's gone under, but of course, you know, yesterday was chaos and the day before was chaos. But it is interesting. Um, it's at a buck ninety six. It is down a little bit, but it's had a pretty good little run. I think we started covering this thing at what sixty five cents, seventy five cents when it first popped on, and it popped on again. My guess is it's still a trade, um, and it's not a it's not a flip so much. But for those of you that are in the profit, if you're in the money, especially if you're looking at a double, like a lot of people. You could take some off the table, right? Take your original investment out. Now you're on the house's money. You can sleep at night. Yeah, sleep. Imagine that. Imagine sleeping through all this chaos. I slept like a baby till I woke up and find out I got Dara screwed. <laughs> and that's, you know, Dara bit's a good exchange, but if they're willing to do stuff like that, you know, what is it? They, they never, never let a good, uh, a good, uh, what is it? A good uh, catastrophe. Uh, pass you by a catastrophe you can it, it put in place opportunity <laughs> you just sub those out anyway uh hxro no clue what it is um not super interested if it starts getting in the mid 80s i'll start taking some looks sushi zero interest iris net zero interest um what's going on on the price changes vthor token up quite a bit it was up a little higher auger waves trust swap flamingo flamingo <laughs> twitter volume solana Good. Um, I may, I may trim down my rune position, which is way in the money, and go equal parts Solana and rune. Uh, Wazer X, Huobi, Dai, uh, Unis, Sed, Leo. That's a lot of stuff going on there in a the name. Let's let's dial it down. Uh, Polygon Celsius, Dai, Kava, Polkadot. You know the story. People are going to be talking Polkadot. June is Polkadot month. Get ready. Uh, let's see. What are the big, uh, any news events? New tokens listed on Kraken, BNT, Sushi, Anchor. Well, that explains some of it, doesn't it? That explains Sushi. Um, my guess is they're going to do some kind of staking with uh, Matic. I think they will do staking or something with Matic. My guess. That's usually what Kraken does. They'll list these assets and then they'll do some kind of staking thing. Um, okay, cool. We've got to that. Um, let me see. There were a couple of questions. Let's see. Uh, crypto gamer said, since I'm in the U S <clears throat> I have a lot of coins stuck in Uniswap cause I don't want to spend. Oh yeah. God. I know it's, it's a mess. Um, yeah, you just look for opportunities to swap, swap out of them, move them around. It, it's, it's very frustrating. Does, if anybody, by the way, pop in and, and send me an announcement, if, if they actually, when they do the, the drop for uh, Singularity DAO. So anybody that owned the token bef uh, on or before the 17th of April, let me go to my main thing here, MetaMask, uh, then they will get the airdrop. And as far as I can tell, okay, no airdrop yet. At least I'm looking in my MetaMask. So, and you will get the airdrop for four months. So, and then you kind of just reapply for it. Now you don't have to, you don't have to claim the tokens. You can. So basically, what happens is you sign in with your MetaMask wallet, 
and they go, okay, cool. And then um, you basically say, I want the tokens. I then they they have the snapshot. So if you had the tokens, the AGI tokens before the 17th of April or on the 17th before the snapshot, then you will be able to go and claim those tokens. Um, so yeah, let's see. Simon, what's going on? Uh, also, uh, Tony, hello. Caught some mid twenties dot. Good move. Uh, Wazer Exchange is making people who lost on Shiba whole by swapping for their native token. You know what? Good on them. Um, yeah, good on them. Uh, Tony, good to see you. Simon, uh, Simon says, I'm sure you've never heard that. Sold my vet before the crash. Nice gains into BTC. Not financial advice, but good time to use that dot. Uh, that to buy dot or wait to BTC goes back up. Hmm. I mean, unless you're buying during the chaos, I always think it's a good idea to give it a few days to make sure this isn't the the uh, fake out before the blow up, before another blow up. But my guess is we're not going to see a deep, deep, deep gut wrenching, you know, slide down the proverbial razor blade like we saw over the last kind of two weeks. I think. Um, I think probably we're at the floor, uh, but that's that's what I thought at forty two fifty. And look what happened. So cool. All right, there was another question I wanted to see. Uh, do you think? Oh, <clears throat> Crypto Gamer four twenty said, "Do you think that FTX Gate or KuCoin might come out with their own versions of BSC?" Well, why wouldn't they? Uh, but likely some of them will leverage Polkadot to spin something out or Cardano. But there are just huge flaws. There, there are huge, huge systemic problems. Oh, by the way, another token just got pilfered. Uh, of course, uh, another flash tag here. Let me put that up. You guys will, you guys will appreciate this. You guys will like this. This good stuff coming from these douchebags over at Binance. <clears throat> flash loan attack causes DeFi token bunny. Token bunny. Token bunny or token. Bunny. I'm guessing bunny. <laughs> and I guess the idea is that they they get together and, and there's more bunnies. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise. Flash loan attack causes DeFi token bunny to crash over 95%. A hacker used pancake swap. Don't use stuff. Don't own stuff with the food in the name. You rubes. A hacker used pancake swap to manipulate the bunny market and crashed it. Nearly to zero. Hmm. Big surprise. Yield farming aggregator Pancake Bunny. How is that even? How is that even a thing? Has suffered a flash loan attack, causing the value of its token to crash by more than ninety-five percent. A hacker used Pancake Swap to borrow a huge supply of uh, Binance's BNB tokens <clears throat> and manipulated its price against Binance USD stablecoin and Bunny tokens, according to tweets. A large amount of bunny acquired by the hacker was then dumped on the market, causing its price to plummet from six dollars to seventeen cents, uh, fr- uh, down to six seventeen from one hundred and forty six. Listen, I hope that no one here that can hear my voice was a dumb enough asshole to own bunny swap, to own bunny pancake, bunny bunny pancake, or even eat bunny pancakes. Or rabbit pancakes, or just rabbit in general. Haven't you heard of rabbit starvation? So anything to do with bunnies, unless you're a bunny farmer, a, an, a, a bunny horticulturalist, you got problems. All right. Um, the total value drained by the attacker is unclear, though blockchain data suggests the attacker profited close to three million bucks. The attack is the latest in a series of exploits on decentralized financial pools operating. And by the way, that's not. That's not hacking. I like how they put the, the hacker. It's not hacking, dude. If you exploit a weakness in code, you're not a hacker. You're not stealing shit. He took those tokens because there was a weakness in the code. A weakness in the half-assed, poorly written, unaudited, bullshit, junior fucking programmer code that these idiots write and that they pump out there and that dumber idiots buy. So if you lost money on bunny swap, bunny pancake, whatever, fuck you. You deserve to. You deserve to lose all of it, and someone should come to your house and punch you in the shoulder. Dummy. I know that's nobody here. 
<laughs> Somebody's going to come beat my ass one day like, bunny swap, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like a little bunny swap t-shirt. It's going to be a dead bunny. It's going to look like uh, the, the rats of Nim. You know that? Anyway. All right. Um, when someone does a flash loan attack, it's an exploit. It's a mathematical exploit using poor programming. <clears throat> so... Um, don't blame the attacker. Good on you. Whoever did that, good for you, sir, or ma'am, or pronoun undisclosed. You earned it. You didn't steal shit. I like when they, oh, they, they took it. They stole it. They didn't steal nothing. They took it because you have shitty code, and you deserve to get pilfered. And all of you idiots that buy this garbage deserve to get nuked. Stay away from this DeFi bullshit, and stay away from CZ. This dirty motherfucker. How many people does he... Well, I, I know he's not stealing anything. He's innocent. It's all. It's not me. It's the. It's me. It's the chain. It's. It's so smart. It's so yeah. Super smart fucking chain, CZ. <laughs> smart chain. Don't call it smart chain, stupid. Just call it CZ chain. And say that you perpetually fuck people. Just say that. Call it PFCZ. Perpetually. Yeah. All right. This attack is latest in a series of exploits on decentralized financial protocols operating on the Binance smart chain. Most recently, uh, B Earn Fi. Oh, also Easy Fi, Meerkat. Go down the list. A cross chain farming protocol suffered an exploit on May 16th. Uh, that was, oh, not even a full week ago. That was five days ago, resulting in a loss of almost 11 million. Come on. How many times does this dude have to do scandalous shit before people go, you know, you know what this is? CZ is the crypto version of Bill Cosby. Okay. Two women come forward. No, not, not Bill. Seven women come forward. I don't know. 80 women come forward. You know, there may be something to this story. Jello Putin. CZ is the Bill Cosby of crypto. Only not near as funny. He just feigns to, oh, it's not me. It's the platform. It's a fuck you, dude. Of course, neither Binance nor Changping Zhao has commented on the exploit at press time. Binance was not immediately available. Of course not. Although he's immediately available to show up on Clubhouse at the drop of a dime when he thinks there's a bunch of compliant fucking rubes that'll go kiss his ass on there. I've endured several of his talks. Self-aggrandizing douchebag, man. Ugh. You get what you get. You play with Binance Smart Chain, you get what you get. If you get your ass kicked, you get what you get. If you make money, you also get what you get because I believe if you risk and you reward from it, hey, you should be paid commensurate with that level of risk. Just understand that it's risk. It's extreme risk. If you're okay with extreme risk, by all means, Monsignor. <laughs> um, yeah. Sheesh. Okay. Uh, crypto, I don't like to use BSC, but how else are we supposed to? Yeah. No, listen. I understand. It sucks right now. What I might say is, why don't you not do anything in the DeFi space for about two months and wait and see what comes from Polkadot and wait and see what comes from Cardano and wait and see what comes from Near and Avalanche and Algo? Right? Wait. Do you have to make all the money right now this week? Is anybody here buying a house this week? You need, I need the money now. Now. I need it now. What happens next? Good to see you, Mega Pack. Good to see you. Um, stress relief. If you don't need the money right now, then, you know, maybe chill. Relax. Wait. You know, look at what Fetch is doing. Look at what Singularity Net is doing. That's the whole, the single, the, the SDAO token. What, what do you think this is? This is that. The S Dow token is about that. Let's see what the price is at. 62 cents. I'm curious how the airdrop's gonna affect it. I my guess is it'll dip because I figured people from the airdrop would grab it, and some people, especially after this, would sell it. But on the other side of it, you probably have a lot of people that bought it or that that have that are going to get it that really like it and that really believe in it. And so we'll see. My guess is it goes down, but who knows? It was at 90 something cents last week. Of course, this week's a lot different than last week, but um, you know, look at what these autonomous economic agents, these you know AI-based 
entities are going to be doing in the DeFi space. Look at Ocean and Bondly and Fetch and all of these companies that are starting to kind of partner up and starting to do things together. That's the future of DeFi, and we're not quite there yet, and it's not – I don't think it's safe. It's still not safe, and the only exposure I have to DeFi is, two. I am doing some staking with Fetch, uh, both in their liquidity pool, which is a MetalX liquidity pool, and uh, staking with Fetch on their mainnet, and – uh, and by the way, on the 15th of July, that token will turn to the new token, the mainnet token, and you don't have to do anything. It'll just happen. That's an AI-based company. Um, these autonomous economic agents will be running in the background. Then you have Dynasets with, with uh, Singularity. And this is Ben Gortzel, this is Singularity Net. By the way, I think there's a play to be made uh, owning AGI as AGI ports over to the Cardano token, the, the, the ADA ADI, uh, AGI token, whatever that looks like. I know what it looks like. Whatever that looks like, there's a play there. My guess is you're going to get a big community of Cardano supporters that go balls deep into AGI, into that new token. So I want to own the token before that. Me. We'll see. I think that's an exciting – I think that's a trade. You want to trade? There's a trade. Um, and I'm not saying dump it because I'm, I'm an AI person, so I like that. <clears throat> It's my money and I want it now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, what was that? It's my money and I want. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Let's look. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Oh, this was a really good. You know what? I'm gonna bullet point this for you. It was a really good article. Somebody was saying, "Oh, you know, people are buying gold again." Nope. No, they're not. People are buying some gold funds, some gold ETFs. Why? Because all you hear about, because that's the BS media play right now, is inflation. All this inflation, there's so much inflation, inflation. Infl <laughs> what, in lumber? In copper? Copper's a green energy play. Lumber's a relocation, renovation play, because everybody's been sitting in their fucking house for 17 months. And some people said, you know what, let's clean up this kitchen. Uh, you saw home starts are slowing down. So that trade is unwinding. Where's all the inflation now? It was here. It was we have a lot of inflation, but not this week. Inflation's gone this week. No, dude. And then the Fed says we may we may talk about you know ending our easy money policy. Bitch, you've never had easy money because you don't print money. So they can say whatever they want. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna stop we're gonna stop putting money out. Cool, Jerome. You've never put money out, you dummy. They've never they, – they, they have not created a dollar and put a dollar into society. They deal with bank reserves. Bank reserves go on bank balance sheets. The intent of raising and lower in, lowering interest rates is to push people out along the risk curve to do more, more exotic things and get out of the debt market or to entice people back to the debt market. Well, the, the Fed's going to raise rates, right? No, they're going to peg because if they raise rates and, rate, and rates anywhere along the curve – whether it's bills, notes, bonds, what have you, get above 3.5%, it's fucking lights out for the U.S. economy and probably lights out for the world economy. So this talk is all bluster. Yeah, we're going to bring – why they're going to bring rates up? Because they don't want negative interest rates. There's already re negative real interest rates. That's when you take the rate and you imply inflation against it. But nominal, we're not, no, we're not nominally negative yet. When we go nominally negative, especially in the 10-year, look out. Look out below. They're going to peg the yield curve. What does that mean? Well, not much because all they can do is set a rate and everybody's going to trade around it. So no one cares what the Fed – I mean no one cares what the Fed does. No one. You think bond traders give two shits? You think the bond vigilantes care about what the Fed does? None of them care what the Fed does because they realize it's all a ruse. The Fed does nothing. Good thing. It's a good thing the Fed does nothing because they don't know what they're doing. They can't describe money. And if you can't describe money, how do you solve an economy? You can't print prosperity, especially if you're using Groupons to do it. So, yeah. Anyway, it's kind of a cool article, and I did, I did distill down kind of salient points. Gold ownership is eroding, and the main reason is because of all the things that Bitcoin is – and and 
gold is not. And so I'm just going to go through the list. You sit back and relax and be showered. I'm going to bukkake you. I'm going to shower you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spray some Bitcoin all over you. Just, just shower in it. Uh, third party and custodian risk. You, so you have a lot of uh, third party risk with gold unless you're warehousing it yourself and then you have your own issues of how you're going to secure it and keep it safe. But um, So you have this third party or custodian risk, whether you keep your gold in a depository or it's in coins somewhere, or even if it's in a bank vault. You have that risk that that facility will, will suffer some kind of incident, whether it's a liquidity incident or an unwind or a world war, what, you know, whatever. So you don't have that with with Bitcoin if you own it on uh, you know in a hard wallet a hardware wallet where you you only have the private keys as well as passphrases and all that. So if you own it, it's off the internet. It's yours. You got it. Cool. Um, censorship and seizure resistance. Well, if you guys remember, there have been times in the past where uh, governments would come and they would take gold. They would take valuables. That's been like they've been doing that for you know. Thousands of years. Um, they can't take it out of your brain. Well, not yet. <laughs> Maybe with the neuro the neuro link, they could just like plug in and go, give it, took it. But until then, they can't take it out of your brain. So, um, this uh, you know, Bitcoin, the the ledger is censorship resistant and it's seizure seizure resistant for now. Uh, scarcity. Bit Bitcoin has true scarcity, and I get it. Um, I would point out that you know if you have a hundred million Satoshis per Bitcoin and you have 21 million Bitcoins, you get a figure of somewhere around 2.1 quadrillion individual units, but at least that's it. Right? So it does have true scarcity and we actually know how much Bitcoin is out there. We know how, basically how much has been lost. We know what's still there. There's somewhere between two and about four and a half million Bitcoin left that are unpurchased, unwarehoused, uncold stored out on exchanges. So, my guess is when that number gets down to a million, there's going to be a full-on crapping your pants panic to buy Bitcoin. We'll see. Uh, portability. Well, it's pretty easy to move Bitcoin around because you don't have to put it in your pocket or anywhere else. Uh, memorize your passphrase. Put it on a thumb drive. You're good. You got it. It's yours. No one can take it. How about that? Woo-woo. Um, so transparency. Uh, transportable, divisible. <clears throat> it divides down to one one hundred millionth. That is a satoshi. So every bitcoin has one hundred million little baby satoshis. Kind of makes you think maybe they should just talk satoshi. Maybe um, transportability. Obviously, that's, that's that goes along with portability, fungibility. A bitcoin is a bitcoin is a bitcoin, right? Is it tradable? Yes. Is it liquid? Pretty liquid, except on days like yesterday. And even then, it's liquid as long as you're as long as you're buying. Not liquid if you're selling. Everybody's selling. And that's why the price goes down. Somewhere you find a buyer, right? There is some price where there's a buyer. So it's it's incredibly liquid. More liquid than the other assets. Um, it is, and again, I'm not an inflationist, but you could argue that it is deflationary or uh, because of its fixed supply, disinflationary, right? And gold, gold stopped tracking um, inflation about a decade ago. That's problematic uh, because that's the reason why people hold gold. And they, your grandparents like, I'm going to take this. Go okay. Okay. Grandpa, go, go crap in your freaking man diaper and talk about the war. Um, we're, we're busy here. All right. Uh, borderless, global and permissionless. Um, so depending on how you manage your digital assets, you can go anywhere on earth with them in your brain. Um, and no one can stop you. And so, that would be very different if I had a bunch of gold in a safe and I wanted to leave the country. What am I going to – yeah, right. You're going to get frog stomped at the airport or by boat or whatever, or you're just going to get – or thieves are just going to steal from you. Me, I can just go put on a burlap sack, a jock strap, a pair of sunglasses. I'm out. I'll look like old poor Jesus crossing the border like, leave that guy alone. He's poor. Look at that burlap sack he wears. He's poor. Yeah. Trustless transactions validated by millions of mining computers worldwide allow us to do business with people we don't know and we don't trust and we don't have to trust them because the network is where the trust comes from. Millions of these little shoebox computers all over the world spinning 
forcing, by the way, us towards greener energy, by the way. The, the energy argument is so flawed. I don't even want to get into it. All right. Um, relatively liquid, more than gold, more, more liquid than gold. Uh, Non-confiscatable. We already kind of talked about that, but you got to know your own keys. It's programmable. By the way, the taproot upgrade is coming if they signal it in the next nine days, uh, which is only like two lines of code in all of Bitcoin. But it does allow for um, potentially – and it would go live in November, by the way. So if, if they signal for taproot – right now they got 95% of the nodes signaling yes. So if in the next eight, nine days they do signal the upgrade, the taproot upgrade, they'll do the, the code swap. And then in November, I believe, I don't know the date, November, but it would go live. This is this is like the biggest thing since SegWit for Bitcoin. And it would allow um, the potential for smart contracts against Bitcoin. That's kind of cool. So uh, programmable money in, in every sense of the word. Uh, uniformity, uh, that goes along with fungibility. A Bitcoin is a Bitcoin. And you know what the block time basically is. And you know what the structure basically is. And there's nothing hidden. And you can see it. Uh, and that's kind of cool. Gold mining, you know, you have, I mean, gold mining, you have a huge, huge problems in as far as how destructive that is to the environment. Uh, no one wants to talk about that. Everybody's like, Bitcoin's better. Gold mining, you see these giant machines, mercury, cyanide. Yeah, that's what's left after gold mining. You know that, right? Mercury and cyanide is left in the wake, Right. Even And then if you go into the refinery level, like where I was working, we use uh, to do chemical refining, nitrohydrochloric acid and uh, sodium bimethyl bisulfate. You want to drink any of those things? Do any of those things sound like you want to drink them? Sir, uh, your your warm glass of nitrohydrochloric acid is waiting for you, and here's a sodium bimethyl bisulfate uh, chaser. It's 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 like uh, an alien when the blood when it bleeds – on you and then you're just you melt into a dust how do the aliens if the blood is so corrosive that it goes through metal and you can use metal to cut the aliens and stab them why doesn't the acid go through their their own system like how do the how do their veins not how does they keep the blood how do they keep the blood i don't understand how they keep the blood that part didn't make sense to me. All right. Um, so you just have to you you have to be careful. There's a point where you have to ask, are, are you know, are we kind of done using old mangled rocks <laughs> as a store of value? And I think maybe um maybe the answer is yes. So now you're seeing right now, just recently, because of the inflation talk, people are going into bit uh, they're going into gold. ETFs. They're trying to get gold exposure. It's a flawed trade. It's um, it's a not well thought out trade. But a lot of people are not willing to experiment with the Bitcoin, right? They're not willing to give the Bitcoin a try. And I get it. It's still new. It's still unproven. And you see volatility like this. You see a lot of panic. This guy was. It's a it's a family friend, and he had he's been in Bitcoin. I'm not shitting you. He's been in Bitcoin two weeks. He's been asking me about it for three years. He finally pulls the trigger and puts like 14 bucks in. So he's, he's big time now, right? He's got 14 bucks in the market. I'm being facetious, but it's, it's, a, it's an immaterially small position. It's a small position for a homeless person. And anyway, he's like, it's, it's about time to get out. I'm like, you should get out. This is not the space for you. Like, you know, and what's the, let me get the quote. I got to get the quote. So those of you that uh, have been – let's see. Where is it? Where did I put it? There's this great quote that I use. Ah, hold on. Give me two seconds. It's from Sicario. It's amazing. And it is – I will read it to you because it's so good. <clears throat> if you're getting into the crypto space, all right? Ooh, we got the cool – there are cool conspiracy music. If you are getting into the con- if you're getting into the conspiracy space, if you're getting into the crypto space, the digital asset space, digital asset exposure, okay, you need to understand that it is dangerous, it is volatile, and with with these risks come the rewards. You don't get there's no get out of work free button. 
I, I think that people got in the crypto space 14 seconds ago and they're like, I don't understand. I just checked my watch. I'm not rich yet. I don't understand. Calm down and be prepared to get mutilated. And this is why we don't take on leverage because then you don't have to worry about it, right? You can, as the name, stress relief. But this kind of, this little quote just sums it up. If you're in the crypto space right now and what happened over the last few days bothers you, you should move to a small town somewhere where the rule of law still exists because you will not survive here. You are not a wolf and this is the land of wolves now. And if you don't have the steely gaze of a lazy eyed sniper that just assassinated his 1400th small child in some shitty, you know, bog somewhere in Southeast Asia, then this is probably not the market for you because you are not a wolf. And this is the land of wolves. It is ugly. It is painful. It is miserable unless you have perspective. And what is perspective? Know what you own. Be able to explain it to yourself so that you, you get it. You, you understand the things that you own. You can explain it to your grandmother. And beyond that, try to buy projects that you believe in, that you can support. Ideologically, philosophically. Yeah. All right. Um, Les, good to see you. <laughs> JP Wentworth. It's my money and I want it now. Yes. JP Wentworth. That was awesome. Okay. Uh, Fuelist, good to see you. All right. Win Lambo. Uh, well, I don't know about yours. Mine is coming in. It ships in July. Uh, it's called – it's Scandal Green, but it's actually it looks like a tennis ball with all black accents. It's dope. It's going to rent real well. Um, okay. Uh, and then I have this article that I thought was kind of interesting. We do, we do bash Paul Krugman every now and then. Um, he won a Nobel Prize. He's a very smart guy. Did he win it for being super smart? It's tough to say why he won it. it. It's kind of on a base of maybe kind of flawed thinking, but whatever. He's a Nobel laureate. And I've listened to him. He did a master class, and I listened to it because you listen to everyone. Just because you don't like someone, don't agree with someone. Listen, I don't like Rao Powell, but I listen to him. And about 80% of the time, I learn some really good stuff. And about 20% of the time, I'm like, how does this guy breathe at night without having someone wake him up? Rao, breathe. <gasps> Sometimes he's like, but it doesn't matter. You still listen to people that have specific knowledge, sector knowledge, project, product knowledge, because you can learn a lot. Okay. Even if you disagree with them. As a matter of fact, especially if you disagree with them, because they might be pointing out flaws in your own logic, right? Maybe, maybe they're not the ones who are wrong. You got to be open to being wrong if you want to be right more than not, right? So let's talk about Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman suggests that flaws and all, Bitcoin is here to stay. What? What say you, Paul? The Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman has posted his thoughts on Bitcoin following the heavy drop in the currency this week. Krugman was previously known for being a crypto skeptic, uh, self-titling himself as self titling himself we get it get off the descriptors as this uh based on what he says are the inherent flaws in bitcoin notwithstanding the economist appears to have altered his 2008 wait a minute hold on real quick edit his 2008 views on bitcoin the first block of bitcoin was mined on january 3rd 2009 i feel like paul probably wasn't in a time machine zipping back into the past to say something about Bitcoin. My guess is anybody who had comments about Bitcoin before there was a Bitcoin, maybe that's flawed. We'll see. Okay. It's not a convenient, it's not a convenient medium of exchange. Of course, it didn't exist at that time. It's not a stable store of value. Didn't exist. It's definitely not a unit of account. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Is it a medium of exchange? Yes. Is it convenient? It's a lot more convenient than going to a bank. Is it a stable store of value? No, it's not stable. He's right. 
but over time it's gone up about 200% year on year since the beginning of its existence. It's the most appreciating asset in human history. So is it a store of value? No, it's a creator of value. So he's right. It's definitely not a unit of account. Mm, well, no, it's, it, it is a unit of account. <laughs> it just depends. Do you rate, do you go how many dollars makes a Bitcoin or one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, right? Anyway, he wrote, its value rests on the perception that it is technologically sophisticated way to protect yourself from the inevitable collapse of fiat money. That's not my, that's not why I have it. But a lot of people, he's right. A lot of people do believe that, not all of them, which is coming one of these days or maybe one of these centuries, or as I say, libertarian dirt plus techno babble. Well, he's not a big fan of the Austrians. He's, a, he's Keynesian through and through. But Paul is a smart guy, and my guess is he's, his intelligence is usurping his cognitive dissonance. As the cryptocurrency market plunged to a 14-week low, several pundits voiced concerns that it signaled the imminent arrival of a bear market. <sighs> These assholes don't understand network effects. Almost all major coins were impacted by the market drop, with either losing about 50% of its market value, the lowest since April. Wow. Wow, they're at the lowest point in a month. Can you guys believe it? Bitcoin hasn't been this low in over a month. Whew. I mean, this is something to worry about. <laughs> Krugman's Twitter comments. Why the fuck is Paul Krugman on Twitter? What is wrong with this plant? We are, we're in this. Look, you don't need to go down the rabbit hole. We're already in it. <laughs> you guys know that we're in the rabbit hole. We live there. Okay, as the cryptocurrency market plunged for okay, Krugman's comments on Twitter and the survival, I guess it was on FinTwit. I didn't get the I didn't get the text. Krugman's Twitter comments on the survival of Bitcoin were somewhat more measured than other economists. The well-known Colombian well-known Colombian Colombia economist Jeffrey Sachs has spoken strongly against Bitcoin, didn't buy it, stating that the world would be a better place without the digital currency. Sure, if you want to live in the dark ages, you know what? I wish we were back using kerosene and whale blubber. This whole gasoline thing's really taking us for a loop. Matter of fact, I don't really even like electricity. If you're, be, you know, if we're gonna be honest about it, and cars. Matter of fact, the wheel and fire, ugh, icky. <laughs> Paul Krugman said in his his tweets, his tweets, uh, BTC isn't a new innovation. It's been around since 2009. Okay. We're getting, we're getting the age right. In all that time, nobody seems to have found any good legal use for it. Oh, really? Why don't you go ask all of the people that are fucking starving to death in these third world countries, and they, they basically buy these old miners, and they use it so they can feed their fucking kids. Paul, you fucking dick. These people that live in this weird kind of environment where they've got cash, it's the anthropomorphic principle in, in – behavioral psychology so let's say you live in beverly hills and you look out your window and all you see are aston martins and ferraris that's how you think the whole world is guess what paul and you other fucking dicks the whole world is not you know rainbows and fucking sunshine and and ferraris and goddamn well you probably drive a volvo paul it's but th that tells you right there that's all you need to know about this guy and again I'm not, i don't want to sell him short He's an extremely intelligent guy, but it's comments like that that let you know he has not really conceptually grasped what's going on. He's a black and white TV guy, right? A two sides of the bus guy, a uh, separate uh, water fountains guy. You know what I'm saying? Different time. They grew up in a different time. He doesn't get it. All right. You won your Nobel Prize for whatever you want it for, but it, it wasn't for game theory. And it wasn't for software engineering. Anyway, he continues. It's not a convenient medium of exchange. <laughs> it's not a stable store of value. That part's true. And it's definitely not a unit of account. Wrong. Um, next, its value rests on the perception of this technologically sophisticated way to protect yourself from inevitable collapse, blah, blah, blah. We heard about his thing. Wrong. Um, but I've given up predicting imminent demise. There always seems to be a new crop of believers. Maybe just think of it as a cult that can survive indefinitely. You mean the same kind of cult that believes in the Fed, Paul, that believes in lowering interest rates to spur economic activity with bank reserves that can't be used in society, Paul? Or uh, how about all this stimulus? Paul's the guy who said 
and that you know it's not that stimulus doesn't work it's not that qe doesn't work it's that we haven't done enough of it right and then you point him and you say hey paul go explain japan you fucking rube because you're so smart because you get it why don't you go explain the japanification of society why don't you go explain qe and qqe go ask abe how that's going you fucked hard these guys are so dumb man they're so dumb and what they do is they get in these they get in these echo chambers with a bunch of compliant rubes yeah yeah he won a nobel prize he's probably really good at swimming and spelunking what stay in your lane paul go give luncheons to a bunch of old degenerates that believe in your bullshit that after they hear you talk and pay $250,000 a plate to hear your dumbass, you know, ramble on about a bunch of Keynesian bullshit that is provably wrong. Then why don't you make your way down the street and go and hang out with Warren Buffett and, you know, and Charlie and, and just talk about, you know, how people are so dumb now, how none of us get it, but you guys really get it. But yet, you know, I mean, we're taking all the money, but, but because you guys are so smart though. And this is why they'll keep missing it and keep missing it and keep missing it because they're not willing to be wrong. Everybody here in the crypto space, this will be my parting thought. I'm not going to keep reading this guy's bullshit because it just, it doesn't even make me mad. It It's embarrassing that this is where, Nobel Prizes go. Do you guys know the etymology of the, of the Nobel Prize? Nobel, Mr. Nobel, uh, he was the one who basically invented high explosives. Yep. He probably is responsible for more death, destruction, chaos, mayhem, and pain on Earth than any other one human in history. I mean, high explosives, which led to, you know, bigger high explosives. So in order to kind of make that go away and that not be the conversation, he set up the Nobel prize kind of association. And so, yeah. So every time you say Nobel prize, it's like, Oh wow, he's so smart. Well, <laughs> if you dig, you'll find a guy that blew up the world. I guess it's better than the high explosive prize. Probably wouldn't sell as much. It's not something you would hold up. Is it maybe, Depends where you're from. If from, you're like from Kosovo or Bosnia, you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dinosaurs would catch all three of those guys as well as bears. Venezuela, look, all of these third world countries where the governments get out of control and they start printing money like actual printing currency units, right? Not like the Fed that prints, that doesn't print anything real, but real currency units that you can see and touch and feel. And when these guys get out of control and you have single moms and people that have no other way to feed their families plugging in Bitcoin mining rigs, you tell me a better fucking use case on the whole planet Earth. Not to get rich. I, these guys, oh, it's a wealth trade. Fuck you. Either you missed it, you're not in it, or you don't get it. That's such a bullshit thing. It's a wealth trade. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying Bitcoin is perfect. Bitcoin has a lot of flaws and blah, blah, blah. I'm saying it's not a rich guy trade. Are there rich guys in crypto? Absolutely. But it ain't a rich guy trade. It ain't a wealth trade. I heard a guy today on the show I was on. Man, they had my mic. They had my mic muted, and I didn't want to be a dick. He's like, well, for those of you that can't afford $40,000 for Bitcoin, I was like, Oh, there's so much stupidity. You know what it is? Maybe we just do a lot of research because we are neurotic. We are neurotic mother effers. Well, you know what? Sweets to the sweet. If you do the research, you win. If you don't, fuck you. I don't care if you lose. You got to be willing to do the homework, man. You look at... Let, let me tell you, Jerry is a great example of someone who rolled his sleeves up. He didn't, he's not a software engineer. He didn't come from, he didn't come from a background of, of, you know, currency trading or gold or whatever. At least I was in the money business. At least I was in the money business before I got into this, you know, Jerry, dude, he was a poker player. He was a professional poker player. 
among other things. But he rolled his sleeves up. He learned about the crypto market, and it made sense to him, and he completely changed his life. And now he dedicates time to helping other people change their life. But you know why? Because he did the research, man. And then that's why when Jerry says stuff, it makes sense. And Antonio, when he says stuff, it makes sense. And when Leroy says stuff, it makes sense. Now, you might not agree with all of it. You might not agree. You, listen, I hope you don't agree with most of the stuff I say. If you do, this world is really fucking doomed. But if you get nothing else from this, don't trust these douchebag Keynesian motherfuckers that have decimated our financial system. You go out and do your own research. You go read the Bitcoin, you read the Bitcoin white paper, you go read the Bretton Woods agreement, and you learn about the euro dollar system. You need to understand how fucked everything is to understand why this makes sense. Yes, put a like on this video or not. Or put a thumbs down. I don't really give a shit. They pay me on my other show. They pay me real well. So I don't care. Um, but you guys got to – you have to find a reason to do the research. You have to find a reason. If you're not willing to do it, don't own any of these assets. You haven't earned the right to suffer along with us. Yes, because that's what you get. When you come into the crypto space, you buy a ticket on the Vomitron. It will spin you around 17, 18 times a year and make you throw up. But you know what it will also do? It will pay you many lifetimes of currency units for just showing up to the game. So, I mean, it's your call. We're at the beginning of a new asset class. No one else has been on there. No one else has seen this. No one else has participated unless you were born or around in 1696. I wasn't. I know I'm old. I'm like 400. I'm like, I look like I'm 400, but I'm really not. <laughs> I get that a lot too. Hey, good to see you. Yes, Heath is great. Heath is great. Kenny's great. Uh, Garrett, we're going to go to war because he was the one who was saying, I like Garrett a lot. Garrett's actually really smart. He's an economist. But you know what? Paul Krugman's an economist too, and he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Garrett's not an idiot. I like Garrett. But he is completely a thousand percent wrong about Bitcoin. He doesn't understand it. That's fine. I'm going to make him understand it because we're going to do battle next Monday. Surf Tech, good to see you. Okay. Do your research, peeps. If you do the research, if you do the work, right? My buddy Diego, he's doing the work. My buddy Brian, doing the work. Interesting note, by the way. Interesting note. Um, of the guys, because I play soccer a lot, and of the guys that I play soccer with, we've been playing for like years, years. All of us together, all playing. We know each other. We, it's the team captains that that – were the first on board into the crypto space. You think that's interesting? You have to be a leader at least of your own life. You got to take charge. No one is going to do this shit for you. And if you're leveraging other people, only leverage them to tell you which direction to go in to do more research. Do not just buy stuff or do stuff because other people said otherwise. That makes you no better than any of these other compliant rubes. You're a game stopper. Don't be a game stopper or a Hertz or Hertzian or any of these other compliant fucking rubes that don't know what they're doing. Take some measure of charge and control. And the best way to do it is research, man. <laughs> Come to Cali, can you sub in? Let's see. Bam. Of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brady said, where can we find a link? Okay, the link for the Monday show was in the Tuesday show. Does that make sense? So if you want to go to the Tuesday show, first of all, click the like on this video. It doesn't matter. I don't get paid for this. You guys know that. I didn't, I didn't get paid for the other one either, and I had 4,000, 5,000 subscribers, and then YouTube busted us for doing that show about Ripple being a pump and dump. Isn't that weird? I took their side. I took YouTube's side, and YouTube bounced me. They're like, we reviewed the video, and we found some, some content that was uh, – no, you didn't. You didn't review shit. You just looked at the title. You scraped the title, and you bounced me. And we found it uh, to be uh, controversial to the to – the, uh, no, you didn't. 
That's fucking lying. All right. Anyway, who cares? Um, because we have theta. And you know what? They don't bounce us on theta for telling the truth. <laughs> we found some controversial content that uh, we feel is uh, bad for the community. Yo, right, you mean bad for the people that pumping up the coin and we called them out on their shit. That, that community. The GameStop community of fucktards that were fucking people over. Those guys. Yeah, we, we were bad for them. Man. Huh. Anyway, yeah. So if you want the – so the Monday show – uh, I put the link on the on the in the notes of the Tuesday show. So if you go to the Tuesday broadcast that we did, click on the details. Uh, throw it a like if you can. Click on the details, and like the first thing is a link to the Monday show. Cool. Um, let's call it a day. You guys get to it. I don't know if I can get. Yes, Grandma is revving up. <laughs> she's she's getting ready to uh, to rock and roll. Um, don't do anything, my poor insolvent drunk, strung out on meth, cracked fiend, smoking water, high as a kite on hash and lewds, grandma wouldn't do. And uh, today, she's freebasing PCP. So, um, I don't know about tomorrow's show because I'm doing a show for Money Map. Uh, so we will see. I'm also turning in a car that's a lemon and going to get some more stem cell crap put in my knee so lots to do tomorrow but maybe we'll do a weekend show how about that stay out of trouble this is Time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain. We here to fix that. You want the news on the new stocks? This where you get that. So go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? Hey, hey, you talk? We talking condos and nice clothes and dropping Lambos. I remember them night codes. We couldn't stand those. We tried to drop on them high roads, but had to stay low. Now there's solutions to hard bills we couldn't. I talked to profit to get some profit, we couldn't change the top. If it's a stock and I need a cop it, I wait for him to drop it Ain't no option, let's get it poppin', we chillin' in the trap I need some crypto, put it in my pocket, by any means I rock This is the profit with Nick Black, it's time to chit chat You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that You want the news on the new stocks, this where you get that So go and grab you a nice chair, it's time to sit back and talk to profit Hey, hey, you talking to the profit Oh, and real quick, I know that a lot of people already left, and I don't care. We may be doing a live show from a racetrack. I'll give you more news. Probably in one to two weeks, we're going to do a live show out at a racetrack with some dope-ass cars. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. Wah, 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 wah. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen.